Oil Company presents Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight, brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, at the same time, by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. Say, how does your motor sound when you try to start it on these frosty mornings? Does it sometimes sound like this? If your motor sounds like that, look out. For that slow, heavy grinding is possibly caused from oil so stiff and heavy, it acts like glue in your motor, creating a tremendous drag on moving parts. This makes your car hard to start, of course. But much more serious, that stiff oil doesn't get up into your motor fast enough to lubricate properly. Now, it's a known fact that more wear is put on your motor during a dry start than you'll probably put on your motor during a whole day of driving. Before long, you may have a ruined motor and a big repair bill to pay. Now, fortunately, there's a simple, easy way to avoid this. Change to a wetter oil that's fast-flowing. Fast-flowing enough to get up into that motor and lubricate it right from the word go. And stand up after subjected to high driving heat. Now, I'll tell you an oil that will lubricate your motor safely during these cold winter months. That's Skelly Tagoline motor oil. You see, Skelly Tagoline flows exceptionally freely at low temperatures. It gets up there fast. And its tough, protecting film guards against that metal-to-metal -metal contact that breaks motors down. If your motor's been grinding slowly on the start, you'll probably find it turn faster and smoother the moment you put in Skelly Tagoline winter motor oil. So drive in at Skelly's red, white, and blue sign. Fill up with Skelly Tagoline motor oil today. The boys at every Skelly station know just the right weight for your car. And if your radiator hasn't been protected for weather, they have a real antifreeze for you. And say you boys and girls who are listening, tell Dad about Skelly Tagoline winter oil, won't you? He'll be glad. He'll probably visit a Skelly station soon. And while you're there, you can join the Captain Midnight Flight Patrol. And the Skelly Man will send in for your free Mr. Magic weather forecaster badge. And now for Captain Midnight. Last time you remember, Captain Midnight and Chuck took a walk after Chuck's birthday party. Then they were held up, and the mysterious bandit asked for Captain Midnight's watch. Well, this would have identified Red Roberts as Captain Midnight. Luckily, Captain Midnight did not have his watch with him. It is now early the following morning, and Captain Midnight, Chuck, Steve Donovan, and Fred Boyd are gathered together in Boyd's office at 7G headquarters on Black Gulf Field. Steve is speaking. Great guns, Red. So you and Chuck were held up within 400 yards of the house. That's right, Steve. Uh, things have come to a pretty fast when you can't go for a walk outside your home without being robbed. There's more to this than just a robbery, Fred. Well, they took all of Red's money, even one of his watch. Seemed mighty put out when they couldn't find it, didn't they, Red? Yes, mighty put out. That's just the point. Well, it's, it's sure a lucky break you found out that your watch had gone haywire and that you'd given it to me to take down to the jeweler. It's extremely lucky, Fred. You mean the robbery was just a blind for something else, Red? That's exactly what I mean. Then the whole purpose of the holdup was to get your watch. And all the time I had it. Still have it, for that matter. Which is a lucky break for all of us. A very lucky break. Well, I'll take it down to the jeweler's. It'll be safe there. Good. Steve, did you locate that aerial camera? Oh, yes, I did, Red. I put it in the baggage compartment in the plane. How about film? Oh, there's enough film to make a map of the whole Rocky Mountains. Well, now then, let's go over our plans before we take off. Fred, you'll be here at Black Gulch Field. Steve, Chuck, and I will fly straight to the mine. The moment we get there, we'll install the camera in the Bonanza plane we rented. Then Chuck and I will take off on our trip to try to photograph Shark's hideout. Gee, I hope everything works out okay. Steve here will stay at the mine. If you want to communicate with me by radio, Fred, you'll be able to while we're flying our own plane and while we're at the mine. But not after we take off in the rented plane. Okay, I understand. How long do you think it'll take for you and Chuck to get those pictures? A little over an hour if nothing goes wrong. Well, it's uh, only 8 o'clock now. If you don't have any trouble, you should be back here about noon. That's what I'm hoping. Now then, one thing more. Is there a photographic studio in town? Well, yes, if you can call it a studio. <laughs> yeah, queer old duck runs it. He uh, does his own developing, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, fine. I want you to make arrangements with him to develop this film for us. I will. If we get back at noon and take the film to him right away, he can have prints ready for us by this evening. Oh, then we'll have our area map. Gee, won't that be swell? Well, I don't see how a map's going to show where Shark's hideout is. Well, wait till you see the map, Fred. Then you'll get a better idea. Have you ever looked at a detailed aerial map, Fred? Well, uh, 
Well, no, I, I guess I haven't. Well, you'll be amazed to see the detail that's shown in a good aerial picture. For example, you can see a telephone line. Why, George, do you mean to say you can see the wires? <laughs> well, no. That's going a bit too strong. <laughs> but you can tell it by the shadows of the poles and the pile of dirt near the base of each pole. Gosh, I never thought of that. Why, sure. During the war, they got to the place where they could discover lots of things like that. During the trench fighting, they often buried cables leading back from listening posts. You could even tell where these cables were by the line of disturbed earth over them. Hey, they're running up the engine. Ah, that's right. We better get started. Well, we can talk about pictures when we get back. Steve, Chuck, I guess we better be on our way. Well, I'm all set, right? Oh, so am I. Boy, have I got my fingers caught. Well, good luck, boys, and I'll see you about noon. So long. So long, Fred. Yeah, so long, Fred. Say, Red, I'm going into the hangar room, and I'll meet you at the ship. Right, you are, Steve. Hey, Red, I've been thinking. <laughs> what, again, Chuck? Oh, no kidding, Red, this is serious. You remember that fellow who held us up last night? Yes, Chuck, I remember him only too well. Oh, do you remember his voice? I certainly do. Well, would you know it if you ever heard it again? Absolutely. Uh, why? What are you getting at? Well, Red, I think I heard that fellow's voice before. You have? Yes, I'm almost positive I have. You know... I thought maybe I did, too. Now I know I'm on the right track. Tell me, do you know who it was? Gosh, Red, I've been trying to figure it out. I know I've heard that voice before, but I just can't place it. But if I ever hear that voice again, I'll know it right away. I think we both will. I'm sure of it, Chuck. Well, look who's here. Well, hammer me down if it isn't my old pal, Chuck Quinn. <laughs> oh, hi, Harry. Goodbye. You know Red Roberts, don't you? Well, grind my veils, of course I do. How are you this morning, Robert? Good morning, Mud. How do you like your job for this time? Just fine, just fine. I like my job swell. <laughs> Which reminds me, I ain't thank young Ramsey here for putting me wise to it. <laughs> Gosh, I was tickled to death to tell you about it. Hey, by the way, Mud, do you know how to fly? Do I know how to fly? <laughs> Why, just put me at the controls once and see. <laughs> Why, I can handle a ship better than any autopilot you ever saw. <laughs> well, we'll have to try you out sometime. Now you're talking. Just give me a chance once and you'll see flying what's never been seen before. Say, I see Steve Donovan putting a camera into the plane. Now, I worked on an aerial map of job once, and if you want any help along that line, why, you just call on Ichabod Mart. What kind of work did you do? Oh, I installed the cameras and loaded and unloaded them. Well, that's old stuff to me. Or would you like to help on an installation job this morning? Well, loop the loop. Lead me to it. <laughs> you get into that falcon, we'll be with you in a second. Would I like to handle a camera here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am. Oh, you. Oh, what a guy. <laughs> yeah. And if he can do half what he says he can, he'll be a lot of help. Oh, here comes Steve again. Well, uh, we're all ready. Okay, boys, we're all set. Steve, we're uh, taking this new mechanic, Mud, along. He says he knows all about an aerial camera. Well, that's fine. We can sure use some help. Where is he? Well, he's in the ship, Steve. Well, it's 12. Come on, then. Let's fire this. All right. Jump in, Chuck. Okay. Up to you, Red. Right. I'll close that door. <laughs> hey, look. Mud's in the pilot seat. <laughs> well, hell me down. Don't you want an A number one pilot to do the flying? Did you test this motor, Mud? Sure, she's purring like a sewing machine. Well, I'll rev it up once more for safety's sake. There, didn't I tell you? She's running fine. All right, Chuck, ready to take her off? All set, Rick. Give her the gun. After a short flight, Captain Midnight and his friends are near their destination. Well, boys, we're almost there. Oh, I remember, Steve. Just over that bridge. What about it, Chuck? You think you can land the ship all right? Sure, I think so, Rick. Can I try it? Well, hammer me down. I don't see no place to land. Oh, there it is, Mud, right down there. Don't you see it? Sure, I see the mining camp, and I see a stretch of ground about as big as the counter in Mud Donovan's restaurant. <laughs> Hey, you're not going to try to sit this plane down there, are you? <laughs> of course we are, Ichabod. What did you think we came up here for? Well, I'm <laughs> my well. I thought you said you were a pilot, Mud. So you shouldn't be scared. Well, sure I'm a pilot, but I didn't calculate on anybody landing a ship in somebody's mess hall. Watch it now, Chuck. Better start your glide. Just getting ready to now, Red. This is a ticklish place to get into, Chuck. So watch your step. I will. Any guy that can get in and out of here will shake and land in a cellar and then fly out again. This will be a good test of your ability, Chuck. 
Uh, which way you can land, Chuck? I figured I'd land on the runway from north to south. That's right, but you're headed west right now. Yeah, here's how I thought I'd do it. I'll keep in my drive straight ahead until I'm about 50 feet off the ground. Then I'll turn to the left, side slipping as I turn. Then I'll set her down. Good work, Chuck. You know more about flying than I thought. Uh, Steve taught me all I know. He says that the only way to get into a small field is by side slipping. Don't be too hard to for Chuck. I don't think you're going to make it. Yes, I am. Watch this side slip now. Start getting your tail down, Chuck. If your wheels don't touch at the edge of the runway, Chuck, you're going to... I'll over... make it, I'll make it. Here go the flaps down Hold it steady. Hey, we'll overshoot and fall down that mountainside. Keep your shirt on, Mud, and shut up. Hold it now, Chuck. Steady. There, there, that's it. Uh, here we are. Great guns, Chuck. That was a nice job. Just as good as I could have done. I guess I'm improving, huh, Steve? I'll tell you what, Chuck. You're going to end your wings pretty soon. Watch it, Chuck. We're getting near the end of this runway. You'll have to use your brakes. Yeah, jump the chimney. You don't break, Chuck. Look at that ravine ahead. Right at 500 feet deep. Hold tight, huh? Kick on the brakes. Oh, say, fine work, Chuck. Now, turn around and taxi over around in front of the office. Thank right, you, on. Well, hammer me down if old Mr. Barney ain't cracking the ground again. <laughs> Boy, am I glad. Well, I thought you liked to fly, Ichabod. <laughs> yeah, I do, but, but I'm sure glad to be back in the ground again. Well, there comes someone out of the office to meet us. Yeah, it looks like Mr. Carson, the mine man. Ah, that's who it is, all right. Well, here we are, fellas. Can I cut the motor? Uh, no, Chuck. Uh, shut the gas off and let it die gradually. That's always easier on the end. Okay, Red. Gas is off. Hey, what's the matter with that guy, Carson? Mm, something's wrong with him at that. Look, he's pointing up at the sky. Well, clean my carbon. Look up there, fellas. Great guns, I see it. Look, Red. A black-winged plane. A black-winged plane? That can mean only one thing. One of Shark's planes has been following us. What do you think of that? One of Ivan Shark's planes shadowing Captain Midnight and Chuck. What does that mean? Does Shark suspect the purpose of their flight? Will Captain Midnight dare take off on his photographing trip? We'll find out more tomorrow. And now, remember, your car will start faster if you change to weather oil at once. Even more important, your motor will be safer when its propeller will be safer when it's protected by a real weather oil. An oil specially made to flow freely at low temperatures and stand up when subjected to high driving heat. Remember this, too. Jelly Tagoline Winter Oil is the oil to change to. It's amazingly fast-flowing. Rushes to every part of your motor the minute you step on the starter. Jelly Tagoline keeps your motor safe. And besides, it stands up mile after mile. Saves extra quarts and extra quarters. And you boys and girls, Tell Dad this. Tell him he ought to try Skelly Tagoline oil for winter right now. And when he goes to the Skelly station, you go along and join Captain Midnight's flight patrol. It doesn't cost you a penny to join. And the Skelly man will send him to headquarters for a free Miss Go Magic weather forecast of bad for you. And listen tomorrow, same time, same station, for further adventures of Captain Midnight. Brought to you by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. Will Captain Midnight and Chuck dare to take off on the photographing flight? Be sure to listen. Until tomorrow, this is your Skelly Man saying goodbye and happy landing! Oh.